Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today, um, I'm going to talk about something that's a bit more abstract. Um, it doesn't really have to do with anything with news. It's just kind of uh, films and storytelling in general. And the idea is that when we think of a story, stories always have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it, it doesn't matter what kind of story that is. Um, whether that's something that happens and it exists in real life. And, you know, the thing with that concept of having a beginning, a middle, and an end is something that is kind of, it, it escapes, you know, what Hollywood wants to do at this point. Uh, but ultimately, it's, it's the basis of storytelling is you have to have an end. Um, you know, with the way that... They, they want to have these kind of endless franchises. Um, and you can say that with Marvel. You can say that with uh, what they're trying to do with Star Wars now and some other stuff. But ultimately, every story has to end. And the longer you drag it out, the worse that ending usually becomes because people expect either so much more of it uh, given the, the quality of what preceded it or the fact that people, the, the franchise itself becomes stale before the end even comes into fruition and it's lackluster at best. So it's kind of that idea that if you you need to know when to end something, if you carry something too long, you know, you know there's an old term, um, from television, it's called Jumping the Shark, when a show jumps the shark, and it's actually a reference to Happy Days, uh, to an episode where uh, Fonzie actually jumps over a shark on water skis, and the, the term is basically like when Happy Days kind of started to go downhill, when it, was, when it realized it was on for too long, uh, and then eventually they did end the show not long after that, from what I understand, so... Uh, but that term is used again and again for other shows that have gone on for too many seasons and they have grown stale or they have not, um, or the, the content itself has become uh, almost hollow or soulless. Um, but that, that's, that's what you, you see when you, even with films, when you see franchises that go on for too long, uh, sometimes they don't sometimes they fall into that where they have jumped the shark, the franchise is done. Uh, you could say that about the Transformers franchise, at least for the, the Bay series of films. You know, at, at one point, it just was like, okay, we know what we're getting, we don't want any more of it. Um, and you, you can see that in some other things as well, other long-running series. Uh, people have accused the MCU of that, uh, and, you know, only time will tell, uh, to be honest with that situation, but uh, you can see it in other forms of media as well. You can see it in American comics. And I'm going to go into kind of storytelling from a broad perspective. This isn't just necessarily for film. It applies to film, but it's not necessarily for film. And it's kind of the idea of now we have, you know, we have stuff like the MCU and we have stuff like, you know, Star Wars that essentially has been carried now to the point where it's just shattered and destroyed. Um, but you can look at other mediums like comics. So you look at Marvel Comics. Now, Marvel Comics has been around uh, in DC as well. You can look at them too. But uh, both of those companies have been around and making content for very long periods of time. DC, I think, is close to over 80 years uh, with some of their characters. And Marvel is, you know, in the 60-year range, I think, for most of their characters, with a few bleeding over into that 70- to 80-year range. But... It's, it, at a point, you run out of meaningful stories to tell with those characters, uh, with those main characters. And I know that you're never going to see it in comic books where they're not going to stop the runs unless, uh, unless the companies themselves go under. But I like to look over at, you know, manga, for example, you know, Japanese comics, is the idea that the characters age, they progress, they get older, uh, the, you know, new characters come in, old characters die off or leave, um, and, you know, there, there's a lot of really great examples of kind of these uh, series that are just, they're, I wouldn't say they're condensed, they're very long format, but they do have an end. Um, 
And you can see that in a lot of manga where eventually they all do end. You know, uh, Bleach ended. The original run of Naruto ended. Um, you know, Dragon Ball ended for a while until they brought Super back. Um, but there's a, but the the difference is between Marvel comics and Japanese manga or you know American comic books and Japanese comic books is that the Japanese characters age and progress and get older and eventually those characters will either be killed off or die of old age given their comics given you know their runs in their respective books whereas Marvel basically is kind of ageless they kind of they just up retrospectively update their characters. DC does this thing where they just reboot their universe every once in a while and change a couple of things around, make the characters younger, uh, change the backstories a little bit. But, you know, it's a way to kind of keep the train rolling, but uh, ultimately, you have to find an end. Uh, you know, one American comic book that did this kind of great was Hellboy. Hellboy had an ending. It did end. And it didn't drag itself along, I think, longer than it probably should have. Uh, you can look at other stuff uh, over the years, uh, stuff like Alan Moore's Watchmen, which is a miniseries. It was a very confined story, but it had a beginning, a middle, and an end, um, and all of which were satisfying, and they were you know, conjoined into one thing. You can look at stuff like V for Vendetta. You can look at stuff, you know, mo mostly miniseries and graphic novels. Um, even stuff that's contained with, with characters that have been around for a while. Look at Stuff like uh, Dark Knight Returns, where even though they've had two sequel books now, uh, if you just you know concentrate on the center book, you know it's a very good beginning, middle, and kind of bit of an open ending. Um, but the idea is that if you wait too long, you're never going to have a satisfying end to your story. You know you're going to have ups and downs in the middle. But ultimately, that story, that ending is going to fall flat, and you can see that with television shows too. You look at stuff like Lost, you look at stuff like Game of Thrones, um, stuff that you know people weren't necessarily happy with, and they were really used to a certain quality with the series that kind of dropped off at the end, and you got kind of this lackluster ending that didn't really satisfy you as somebody who had watched the series for its duration. Uh, so it's just kind of a thing that Hollywood doesn't really get right now, or rather, I shouldn't say they don't get it, but they want to milk these things for as much as they can, uh, as opposed to giving it, you know, giving the story a satisfying ending and starting a new story. Because that's really the whole point, is when you end one story, you start another one. That's the whole idea, is that you've finished off this character's arc, you've finished off uh, this story that you told with them, and you've ended it, and now you're going to go find a different character, a new character, and you're going to make another story, and you're going to bring that story forward. That's the whole idea of storytelling and filmmaking. You can't just be telling the same story with the same characters over and over and over again and expect people to keep swallowing it, you know, verbatim, un un you know, unquestioning it. So there's some definite problems with the way that Hollywood chooses to conduct itself. Uh, and, I, you know, the MCU is, is in large to blame for, for some of it because of the amount of money that they've made doing what they do. Uh, you know, DC has tried to replicate it to mixed results. Um, and there are others that are trying to replicate it now, too. You see, you know, recently the Godzilla series now where you're rolling in Kong and all those characters. Uh, Universal's been trying to do it with their Dark Universe concept. Um, they're trying to start, I think, the, I forget what studio did it, If I think it was Sony Pictures did the Detective Pikachu movie, but they're talking about expanding that into its own universe. And I don't necessarily think that's a good idea for everything. Now, some things, it, it can work. Some things like Godzilla, I could see it working because it's worked in the past, and now you're doing it with basically a bigger budget and good CGI. But... <sighs> Some things don't. I don't think you need a dark universe for Universal monster movies. If you want to remake the movies, then okay, remake the movies. I still think the originals are probably better. Hell, the Hammer films are better than most of the stuff they're putting out now. But uh, it doesn't really congeal with that type of shared universe. You're not going to have, like, it. you know, you can't do with that, you know, they, they want to kind of do like a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen type of thing. Uh, where it's a bunch of these, uh, you know, classic figures uh, that are together, which League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, by the way, did lump in a few of the, the what are perceived to be the universal monsters with, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde um, and, you know, some other stuff. So, 
Uh, but studios, I think, need to realize if they have a franchise, that's great. That's great if you have a franchise. But you need to know when you should kind of stop it, and you need to try and prepare for that uh, by being able to follow it up with something else. And again, this is something that Marvel's going to have to prove in the next three to four years with their films is to see if they can, you know, they can kind of revamp the MCU uh, with the departure of a lot of their classic characters. Uh, But I think that, you know, like I said, studios like Universal uh, should probably try and think a bit more uh, towards the individual films, which is something that DC has started to do now more closely, is to produce individual films that are fine on their own instead of focusing on a shared universe aspect. So, like I said, you know, this is this is kind of just an abstract conversation, uh, an abstract monologue of just you know my opinion on why storytelling these days kind of suffers uh, in terms of of Hollywood films is because a lot of people don't know, a lot of studios either don't know when to end it or don't want to end it. And they're going to keep trying, and they're going to keep trying until they can mint the next MCU or they can mint the next, you know, Star Wars franchise or something like that. Um, Just because, you know, again, money makes the world go round. That's the bottom line is cash. You know, it, it cash ultimately trumps storytelling uh, in Hollywood. Even though that that is sad to say, it is a fact that uh, that monetary value is more important than good storytelling. Now, if you can get both in one, then you're you're winning. You, then you're winning the lottery there, essentially. But it's something that is getting more. It is taking more and more of a back seat. Uh, to just trying to, you know, get these franchises running and make money. Um, so, again, that's just my uh, my take on it. And uh, I would like to know what your take is on, uh, you know, storytelling in Hollywood. You know, do you, do you still think that there's a good amount of it left? Do you think that there's too much focus on creating and maintaining franchises as opposed to creating good content? Um, you know, leave it in the comments below. I'd like to know your thoughts. Uh, remember to hit the bell for notifications, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?